Welcome back to Successful Living. The stock market and the upcoming election. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've fielded that question, and I mean, it is a concern of everybody out there. Uh, let's give this some historical perspective. Uh, the year leading into an election, uh, the, if we looked at the last 100 years or 80 years, uh, the rate of return of the market was eight and a half. The actual year of the election, like 2020, um, but of every election year was six and a half, so 2% less in the year. And then the year following that, when there was a party switch, uh, it was a 5% rate of return, but if a person got reelected, it was 6.5% rate of return. So this doesn't give us any real great information, but it puts things in a little bit of perspective. Uh, but beyond the election now, we've also have COVID, and that's maybe two storms that come together. So let's take a look at the next slide, which is the COVID-19 impact on the election and the stock market. So if cases are to decrease, consumer sentiment uh, would go up, the economy would be considered going towards recovery and therefore boost uh, Trump's uh, bid to win. Uh, if cases increase, uh, what it looks like is people just want to have change. And if they want change, what they're going to look for is changing who's ahead of it. But more importantly, number three, there's many ballot issues out there. So if this becomes a major, you know, close call and we've got lots of mail-in ballots, what we're actually going to be looking at is it could be days or even weeks before we have a result to who wins the election. The stock market hates uncertainty. If we have uncertainty for days or weeks, you could see a lot of short-term volatility in the market. On the next slide, let's just take a quick look, and we're going to run through this really quick, just the top two here. And this would actually show you that if Trump were to win and we were to have a House of Democrats and Senate were Republican, that the market would still react friendly all the way to the right side first, first line. If we go to the second line and we had a Biden win, a Democratic House, and a Republican Senate, we would also have a friendly market. So those are two of the medium to high likelihoods of what can happen. If we move down to the fourth line where you would see a sweep in Democrats, you probably would see some short-term volatility. Uh, so this sheet, I know there's a lot on it, but just in general, you know, taking a look at that might be a little bit helpful. Okay, so let's move on. If we look at what are managing money during an election year, let's take a look at these. Number one, headlines grab attention. That's the point. Don't follow the headlines. You're going to get caught up in the headlines. Should I buy? Should I sell? Should I do this? Take a breath. Number two, focus on what you can control. If you can control the way you're allocated and you're rebalancing, stick to the basics. Number three, zoom out a bit. Try to get away from social media. Try to not watch as much TV. And number four, balance your approach. Make sure you have a balanced portfolio. If you think you should go to all cash, you probably shouldn't. Maybe a small portion of it is. So when we come back, we're going to answer a viewer question on whether they should rebalance before the election. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We have a viewer question, as always. Uh, John from Portsmouth writes in, I know I should rebalance my portfolio at least once a year. However, this year seems quite different. Does it make sense to rebalance before the end of the year? Well, John, as always, depends. But let's say you had a 60% in the market, 40% in bonds portfolio. And what happened back in March and April, you rebalanced it, got it back to 60-40. Well, the market has grown quite a bit since then. You may now have 70% in the stock market and 30 in bonds. If you believe the market may take a downturn, it probably makes sense to rebalance. So go back into your portfolio, do a rebalance, take a look at the positions, and what you're going to want to do is make sure that you actually have, again, 60-40 you probably won't automatically be done on its own if it's already been automatically done in your 401k. Take a look at those. Rule of thumb is rebalance a minimum of once a year. If a position moves by more than 5% of its holdings, you should also be rebalancing. So again, we appreciate you being here with us today. We talked a little bit about passion. We talked about uh, mortgage rates and we've uh, addressed the election and the stock market. We look forward to seeing you again. Have a great week.